All right, welcome to the Practitioner Call Series. Today we have a wonderful member of our community, Martin Root, who is doing some, some very amazing things in the world. Uh, and he has done many amazing things in spiritual business. Uh, he's written, co-written a, a book with Jack Canfield and a, a number of others uh, called Chicken Soup for the Soul at Work. And his most recent book, Project Heaven on Earth, or Project Heaven on Earth, <laughs> however you want to say it, uh, is, in, in my judgment, one of the most accessible, uh, intuitive ways to begin a conversation about what most matters. And that, obviously, is something that's very missing in most of our public discourse and, and just in society. And Martin's going to share about his work now and, and how he got to this place and so welcome. Welcome, Martin. Thank you so much, Brandon. And thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, I'm delighted. I, I was thinking before I came on, because I think this is a very special audience, people who are very clear that purpose matters, purpose of individuals, relationships, businesses, countries. Um, so I thought what I would do is give you a little overview of how I got to where I am. And then uh, I want to do some work with all of you on heaven on earth. And we'll, we'll talk about what that means for you and how to get engaged with it. And then I want to talk about examples. Uh, there's a lot of examples. There's a lot going on in the world with respect to Project Heaven on Earth. So uh, born and raised in Canada, uh, also a U.S. citizen now, um, married for 46 years. Uh, spend the summers. Right now I'm in Prince Edward Island, Canada, which is in the far east coast of Canada. Actually, this is the birthplace of Canada, this province. Uh, my work as a consultant, re well, really as a trainer. I started working uh, as a trainer uh, with these people from uh, Chicago. Uh, it's called The Firm, Fundamentals and Responsibility Management. And they developed a course on responsibility, commitment, vision, uh, all words that at the time I'd never heard. I mean, I'd heard, but I never really got them. And I flew to Chicago and took their course and walked up at the end and said, that's it, I'm taking this to Canada. And they said, what? I said, I don't care what you say, I'm taking this to Canada. And the course was really about distinguishing between the mind and how it limits and the soul and how it really wants to soar. So we specifically looked at things called objectives beyond what you believed possible but still wanted, sorry, and still wanted. You know, I want this and I believe it's impossible. And we separated that so you could begin operating outside what you believed possible. The premise being that you don't need to believe you can do something in order to do it. What you need to do to do something is to do it. And how we know that's accurate is because we have many examples in all of our lives of ourselves and others doing things and saying afterwards, I don't believe I did that. So um, we focused on vision that moved me into companies and, and individuals saying, come into my company, start doing vision, work with us. Uh, I had never done anything like that. It's fine. I did that. Um, that went on for a good five or 10 years. Um, and then I had a real crisis, a real, um, in my life, if, if you think of um, uh, carpentry, uh, tongue and groove wood, and then separate it. And I didn't know why the separation had occurred. Was it my marriage and my wife? No, that was really good. Uh, that still is good. Was it my work? No, I love my work. So there was something, I didn't know what. Zahara, you'll love this. I, I ended up at an at a Augustinian monastery north of Toronto and had a nice Jewish boy doing it in a place like this. And I had a, an epiphany experience. And the epiphany was it's about God. And this was in the late 80s. I came back to my workplace and said to my employees, you know, I want to talk about spirituality, God. No, 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 you can't do that. People will think you're crazy. People will think you're... So I, I shut down. That summer I went to New York and I, excuse me, to Los Angeles and started talking to friends. Jack Canfield, who you may know, is one of them. All of whom said, you want to do spirituality and work? Go for it. And that's when the penny dropped and I saw that the issue was my fear of your reaction were I to speak about uh, spirituality and work. 
And once I got that, it was game over. So I went back to Toronto and started. And I just started speaking, speaking. And as far as I know, I was the first person to use the phrase spirituality in work. There was a woman, uh, Sherry Conley, who used the word spirit at work, but not spirituality. So I was instrumental among, with others uh, in setting up a lot of conferences around the world, helping set them up. Um, I began with a, an academic at uh, St. Mary's University in Halifax, Canada. In the business school, we began Canada's first center for spirituality and the workplace. Uh, we had graduate PhD students, undergrad programs, research, public lectures. Um, that went on for eight years. That was really very, very exciting times. Uh, and Martin, could, could I yeah, that's a quick question here. Sure, please any, interrupt. Anybody interrupt anytime. Yeah, because um, you know, as I was you know researching Martin and and preparing for this, I was like, I just want to Google spirituality at work and see what comes up. I mean, it is. It's huge now. There's like, there's like a gazillion books written on it. I mean, there are that, um, yeah. And 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 just just knowing now how many people are out front with you know identifying as Jewish or identifying as Christian or identifying as you know uh, Hindu in a professional setting. I mean that that's a huge contribution that we can that at minimum that part of who we are is now welcome. So I just wanted to say. Thank you for making it acceptable. Thank you. And I think you said it very well. What we wanted to do was make that conversation permissible. We didn't want to proselytize. And the way we did it was to say, because this penny dropped one day for me, the fear of spirituality in work is that I'm going to proselytize. I'm going to try to shove this particular view of spirituality down your throat, which wasn't true for me. I mean, Jews don't, Zahara, you know this, Jews don't. Uh, proselytize except to each other occasionally uh, so how to how to get around that and what I saw was the the basis the premise of the, the the underlying foundation of spirituality is as an answer I have the answer you don't and I'm going to shove this down your throat so we had to get around that and then the penny dropped one day and I I, I, I intuited that what if it's not uh, the answer what well, rather rather what if it's the question and the analogy is this, in a business context, a business person will ask the following inquiry ongoingly every day, how do I make my business more successful? I w suggested at the time that spirituality was the same thing. It was an inquiry, if you chose. If you didn't choose, you didn't choose. Um, so I had to make it safe for people to say no. But once they knew that I had no particular agenda of what spirituality was, like the doors blew open because there's such a hunger to express this in a way that's useful and beneficial within this place called work. Um, and there's now, Brandon, I don't know, uh, and your listener, the listeners here, uh, there is actually an academic journal called the Journal of Management, Spirituality, and Religion. Uh, it, it's, and it's been going, I don't know, 10, 15 years. The Journal of JMSR, Journal of Management, Spirituality, and Religion. So, about 20, 25 years ago, rather, I was doing a, uh, going to do a keynote speech on spirituality it, at a conference in uh, Santa Fe. And I was in the green room ready, meditating. And I had this thought, <clears throat> if every business in the world is spiritual, is that what you want? And I said, no, because if we can transform business, because business has the temporal power in the world today, if we can transform business, we can transform the world. And then this thought popped into my head. Oh, you mean heaven on earth. And I can remember sitting there going, holy shit, you can't say that. And then I thought, why not? Why not? You know, we can talk about hell on earth. That's permissible conversation. Why can't we talk about heaven on earth? Why can't we talk about the kind of world the kind of life, the kind of relationships, the kind of nation that we deeply, deeply long for. And thus was born uh, heaven on earth, the idea of heaven on earth. So then the question was, how do we engage with this? How do we ha make this real? How do we have this show up in the world? And I'm not a big reader. I'm not like you, Brandon. I, I uh, or you, Zahara, with those with uh, <laughs> lots of books behind them. 
the way I, in, I get information is through interaction. I come up to you and I talk and I say, okay, I've got this idea about heaven on earth. What, what does that mean to you? How, how do you, what do you, how do you, what do you? And people would kind of answer and I, you know, it just, I kept distilling and distilling into these three questions, which is the basis of the book. So a little, a little plug here for the book, which is Project Heaven on Earth. And it's the three simple questions that will help you change the world easily. <clears throat> what I'd like to do, because we're such a small group, <coughs> excuse me, is with your permission, I'd like to ask you the three questions, have you answer them, and then watch what happens in the process. It's fascinating, I believe. All right, so question one. Recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. Recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. What was going on? And if you just raise your hand, I can call on you. Yeah, Brandon. Uh, it was a yoga retreat in Mount Lassen in Northern California. And it was facilitated by an amazing instructor and the community there was super bonded and self-expressed and creative and there was delicious food and abundant nature free-flowing conversations um breathtaking beauty and just moving our bodies in a very in intentional way very clear thank you next <clears throat> sahara yeah when I was in a performance of uh, Maria, I can't remember her name, surname, she sang the songs of Todorakis. Okay. And the yeah. woman, the next woman, I'm, I don't know your name. Ruth. Yeah. Ruth, hi. Um, yeah, uh, more than one time in groups in which we were experiencing a sense of oneness like going deeper into teachings and that awareness of oneness. Very that clear. Was a deep experience, yeah. Second question. I'm gonna go over the questions in a moment and, and you'll get them, I'll send them to you. You have a magic wand. And with this wand, you can have heaven on earth. What's heaven on earth for you? Yes, Ruth. So be people feeling integrated and connected with each other, with nature, with the wholeness, and, and acting in ways that honor this integration. Thank you. Sahara. A world um, that nature... I see mainly nature, birds, beaches, and people far, in the far, not close, and music. Okay. And Brandon. There's, it's very similar to what I experienced, but also broadly, uh, safety, to be fully self-expressed and to be oneself. And similar to what Ruth had, had shared, that there, there's a pathway to wholeness, a pathway to realize it, that we're, we're standing for each other to, to become that. It's like this kind of, this web of, of commitment. We're all standing for each other to, to realize our wholeness. Clear. And the third question, what simple, easy, concrete step will you take in the next 24 hours to move that forward? What simple, easy, concrete step in the next 24 hours to move that forward? Just continue doing what I'm doing, my purpose, because it's so related to that. Okay. Thank you. Sarah. And also for me, continuing doing the life I'm doing. Okay. 
Brandon. Where I see I'm most out of alignment with that future is with my close male relationships and to set up calls with uh, a high school buddy, a college buddy, and my cousin and create that stand for them. Within the next 24 hours. Yeah, within the, yeah so set, set those calls so, up. Yep, very clear. All right, let's go through the questions and thank you. Thank you very much. Question one, <clears throat> recall a time when you experienced heaven on earth. I want to talk about what you did and what you did not do. What you did, each of you, was answer the question. Very clearly, very, I was there. What you did not do and what no one does is ask, what do you mean by heaven on earth? Nobody says that. Everybody answers the question. So in order to answer the question, you must know what I'm talking about. It's what I call the already knowing, or you couldn't have answered it. Second, <clears throat> a magic wand. A magic wand removes the necessity of having to know how. And if you don't have to know how, because that's the magic wand's job, you go purely into the what. And you saw and heard how quickly and easily people go right to it, right to it. And then the third question, I don't want to leave it as just, this is a nice idea. I want to actually engage. Have you engaged with it? Have you take action on it? That's the notion of simple. I'm beginning and I'll talk a little bit later about the idea of simple. Simple is one of the driving forces in heaven on earth. Because when you discover it as a simple act, you just do it. Now, there's two kinds of acts in the third question. One is what both Ruth and Zahara said, <clears throat> I'm going to continue what I'm doing. That's because what you are doing is clearly in line with your purpose. My request to the two of you is, in continuing to do what you're doing, would you be willing to have that also be part of your contribution to heaven on earth? I'm, I'm not clear with what you're asking. Yes. So when I said, <clears throat> what is a sim simple, easy, concrete step you'll take in the next 24 hours to make heaven on earth real, the heaven on earth that you described, you said, I'm going to continue doing what I'm doing, mm -hmm. right? So my question is, in continuing doing what you're doing, can you also add that that is part of my contribution to heaven on earth? Yes. Thank you. And right. Ruth? Sorry, Ruth, I didn't hear it. Yes? Yeah, as, as, as long as it's, um, as I understand what heaven on earth is in implying it in the question, uh, yes. Well, it, what it is is what you answered it is. Okay. Then so. it is. Then yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Yeah. And then the other side of that is what Brandon did, which is a new act, something that he has not done before. And so with that, is that part of, or will, could that be, will that be part of your contribution to heaven on earth? And so it's easier for him to say yes, because he gets what it is directly, right? It's a new act. Okay, so <clears throat> recall a time you experienced heaven on earth. People answer that. They don't ask, what do you mean by it? Here's the magic wand. They go right to it. I've had seminars and workshops in which Women, not men yet, but women are crying. And I've had women sobbing, sobbing. It was the first time it threw me. I didn't understand why, but I understand now. It's because this, this knowing that women have, that the feminine has, about what we're here to do, i.e. create heaven on earth, you know, has been buried and pushed down. And all of a sudden, someone's saying, you know that, you know what heaven on earth is? Yes, I do. Now's the time. You can come out of the closet and do it. And they're like, ah, finally. So <clears throat> let me stop there for a second and questions and comments on the, on the questions. So my, um, like, like being connected to this possibility 
for me is very enlivening and I want to be connected with other people who have a, who have a commitment. And so my, my question is, is there any way to connect like outside of the Facebook group? Is there, is there another way to connect heaven on earth? I don't know, like promise keepers. Is there, is, there, is there a way that we can kind of know more about each other and, and help each other? Like so something like that, Martin? Not, uh, let me just uh, clarify something. So what Brandon's talking about, when you sign up for my free seven-day course, you're also invited to join this uh, private Facebook group called We Heaven Makers. And what he's saying is, in looking at that, it's not strong enough. It's not linked enough for you. That's true, uh, Brandon. It's not been something that I've been focused on. I've been really focused on getting the word out about the book. Um, so maybe that's your contribution. I would love that, especially from you. <laughs> so yes, I think that that is, it is, I'll talk a little bit later about um, where I see the field of heaven on earth right now. And so your request is, is just right on the button with what's been going on in the last week or two. Uh, Zahara or Ruth, questions or comments? No, all clear. <clears throat> clear, okay. So, in speaking with people over the years about heaven on earth and what it is for them, there are what I call gateways. And so, let me talk a little bit about them. There are... Uh, hold on one second. <laughs> Whoops. I thought that was marked. It is not marked. Hold on. Yeah. So, when, as I ask people over and over and over and over and over again, you know, tell me about heaven on earth. What's heaven on earth? What's heaven on earth? Very clear and distinct patterns emerge of answers. So, I want to go over them because I think as, as the kinds of work that you do, should you decide to take this on as well, you'll see the, the, um, the venues, the gateways that occur, that arise, that I have found over and over and over. So the first is what I call the inner world. There are those people who say, the way to create heaven on earth is in here. The more heaven on earth in me, the more it will show up in the world. And so there's a chapter in the book about how do, how do you do that? And in essence, there's two ways. One way is you clean up the crapola in your life, right? The, the miscommunication, the incompletion, the I hurt you 10 years ago, the, you know, all the chuba we have to do now, all, um, all the stuff that needs the therapy, the workshops, all the stuff that people do to get rid of the gunk in the way. And the other side of that is expressing more of the heaven on earth that is already within you. How do we do that? clearly living your purpose is, I mean, that's a clear, no question. Uh, living your artistry, giving your gift, experiencing the, the divine, uh, discovering your vision. So there's a whole chapter on how do you get in touch with that, if that is your gateway, it may not be. Then we go to relationships. So there are people who talk about the way you create heaven on earth is in relationship with myself, with another, with others, with God. And so in that chapter, I talk about incompletions in a relationship and what it takes to clean it up. Sometimes it's really difficult. Um, uh, Ruth, I, Ruth, are you Jewish? No, no. No, I thought, I thought you were. My name is, my husband is originally Jewish. My name, my birth name is, but I wasn't brought up Jewish. Okay. Um, because these are what are called the days of awe. These are the days, you know, that between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, where you have to do a lot of cleaning up. So you go to people and ask, you know, have I hurt you in any way by doing something, by not doing something? Not to God, only to other people. So cleaning up relationships so that they become a heaven on earth relationship. For some people that's very difficult. You know, I've had this issue with the bill for years and okay, I get it, I need to go clean it up. And so we talk about how to clean up. You can't just go and say, you know, well, Bill, I hate you. And all the stuff we know about how to clean up a relationship well. Another gateway is living your values. 
there are people for whom the way we create heaven on earth is to have love in the world, to have harmony, to have peace. The premise being that when that value is global and lived, actually lived, there will be heaven on earth. And I know that. Then we go to people who say heaven on earth is the outer world. How can you have heaven on earth if you have hunger, if you have war, if you have famine? And so one of the major outer world issues is ending a suffering. And what's interesting about ending a suffering is there's what I call the keystone suffering. That is, there is one suffering that really, really hurts the person. And you can see it. I'll say, is there a suffering? And they'll just zero in on it if that's their gateway. Hunger, war, violence against women, bang. And what will happen when that suffering's gone? Well, it's a keystone. If you know what a keystone is in a, oops, in a bridge, it holds the bridge together. You take that keystone out, psh, the bridge collapses. That's their keystone suffering. Also in the external world is institutions. This is an interesting one. Institutions taking their rightful place in co-creating heaven on earth. What is the purpose of business? purpose of science, the purpose of law, the purpose of religion, especially now, were to co-create heaven on earth. What would it do as an institution? And, and I'm fascinated by that one because for some people, having an institution take its rightful role in co-creating heaven on earth is more difficult than having heaven on earth for the entire world. The belief systems people have that, that, organiz that institutions are so intransigent, they cannot move and there's nothing I can do about it. So I'm particularly interested in that gateway. <clears throat> um, and then the final one in, in outer world is nations. So there are people, I'm gonna talk in a couple of minutes about people who have taken on their own country and said, my purpose, my heaven on earth purpose is to have my nation be a heaven on earth nation. And then the final gateway is what I call this here now. That is that this here now is heaven on earth. And our belief that it's not is what keeps us from experiencing it. So if we stop, like right now, I'll stop and just ask all of us to do that. Just stop and experience heaven on earth right here, right now. that simple. So those are the gateways. Inner gateways, relationship, values, outer gateways, this here now. And then the book goes into each of those in, in, in really very creative ways about how you can get into it. So the, the book is not a book. It's a journey. It's a workbook. There's phrase, there's, there's uh, quotes, there's exercises. Because as I was writing it, it seemed to me, we can't just give you the idea of heaven on earth as a possibility, that's nice, but it's not enough. We have to have you begin taking those simple actions, we're coming back now to simple actions, which for you will help co-create heaven on earth. So before I go into examples, let me stop there for questions, comments. Well, this is more <clears throat> praise and uh, jubilation. Um, Jubilation. <laughs> Jubilation. <laughs> Sorry. Go ahead, Rand. Sorry. Uh, no, it's fine. <laughs> I, I, I love a corny joke more than anybody's business. So thank you. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Babe. Thanks. <laughs> Ask my wife. <laughs> um, uh, so the invitation to experience it right now, that was powerful for me. I mean, I just saw bright colors around me, the, the guitar on my wall that brings me so much joy, all the, all the bright colors in this room that I'm in, um, and this life and this nest, and, and the privilege it is to do the work we do. Like, uh, I was like, ah, I can't believe it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the, the other thing I heard, because 
obviously, Martin, you are uh, the embodied message. You know, it's this isn't something you just stumbled on and it's a buzzword you're you're excited about. Like, th th this is something that means something to you. And my sense is that um, there are there are people who want to join you, like to. Uh, awaken their own inner Martin, their own inner like ambassador for heaven on earth. And I guess what I, what I'm wondering is like, have have you thought about like minting the next generation? Have you thought about kind of you know in the way that the Pachamama Alliance has the awaken the dreamer people and they go and pop 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 all over the place because I I could totally see this as a a distributed movement that you shepherd. Interesting that you should say that. This arose for me literally within the last couple of days. Um, I've been reading a book, which is, I don't know where, by Adam Kahan, his newest book. And uh, he talked about the, the, the word triggering people, uh, triggering in the good sense, you know? Um, I don't want to use the word trigger because it's too loaded, but switched on. And so I've begun a series of interviews with people who I think are ambassadors, who, who have seen this, who have clearly been switched on and are running with this, running. What caused that to occur? What caused the switch to be flipped? I want to know from them um, because <clears throat> I'd say up till now in this arena, it's been about getting this possibility out. It's been about clearly embodying it within me. It's been about getting my book out. Uh, and so I've known that we're ready to go to the next level. It's not about scalability. It's something around switching on, um, activating those kinds of words. So when you say what you just said, it's completely in line with what I've been thinking literally in like the last week. It's still new for me. And what I'm doing with these, well, there's going to be three of them. Uh, I did my first last night, you know, what caused the activation? And, and these are people post activation, right? So I want to learn from them first. And then I want to see if I can translate that into pre activation. So that's where it is as of today. I think you have a part to play in it. Well, I feel you do. Thank you, Brandon. Zahara Ruth. I don't have a question, I have a feedback. Um, if I got you, if I understood you right, uh, the thing which I really relate well is that you're not offering the kind of thing that, I mean, there are so many ways of spirituality and soul work and purpose work. And one of them is actually negating any option for suffering and saying that everything is beautiful and you can create your own reality and blah, blah, blah. And <laughs> Uh, in, on my on my long years of search, I have been in, in many in many schools, many many schools, and re right where, where I am now, it's really not negating suffering because there is pain, there is dark, there is suffering, there is a shadow part. But what you're offering, and that's what I like, is you can now choose at this moment to experience heaven. So the choice of relating to everything which happens, especially nowadays in world, the choice is always there. And I know that for some people, it's much harder to choose because the circumstances are much, are much more difficult than mine. But that has been actually the, the light that I've been working on, that the choice you can experience right now. Just wait, hang on a minute. Jump in. This is heaven. Very so nice. not negating everything. I, I would always um, appreciate the ways of including everything. But, oh, thank yeah. you for that. Two comments. Um, the sufferings are very important to me because there's a whole chapter on, on the sufferings, ending the sufferings, not making them better. Making them better is wonderful. There are many people who are doing wonderful work, but ending them. And I've been noticing over the last, say, 20 ish years, more and more books coming out the end of poverty, the end of illness, the end of nuclear proliferation. In those words, ending the suffering. 
So part of heaven on earth for me is going into the hells on earth and cleaning those up if, if that's where you're drawn to. But clearly we need to clean, we need to be with and clean up the hells on earth. And the other point I want to make is it's, all, it's about being and becoming. Being in the sense of this is heaven on earth, that's our being, that's our right now. And the becoming is the actions we take now so that there is more heaven on earth in subsequent moments. So if you look at the title of the book, the title of the book is Project Heaven on Earth. But the title of the book is also Project Heaven on Earth. So it's both the noun, project, and the verb, project, embedded in the same word. So to your, to your point. Yeah, and I just want to say a word about what you said, Brandon, about uh, if, if there's a way for people to connect and be together. And I think this is already happening in different ways, not people working as a group, but people coming to the, the group, like at this minute, in order to nourish themselves and, and uh, nurture themselves. Then we go to our own things because I don't really know what Ruth is doing and not completely know. I'm, I've just known you now, Martin. I know a bit of Brandon. But I think we all take it to our world, to our tribes, to our things. I mean, I know that what you were saying, I'm doing it in education and music for many years. This is the path. But so coming back to these groups and <clears throat> rejuvenating and in getting inspired and going back, I think it's, this is already happening. Thank you. Ruth. Sorry, were you done? Yeah, yeah. Sahar? Yeah, thank you. Ruth. Thanks. Yeah, I would say there's uh, a lot of action that involves healing and intending to um, the scars of suffering that have accumulated within people for generations and all of that. So there's deep healing to be done um, in different ways, and it can be effective and quite alchemical depending on how it's performed. But there's big tasks ahead around that. And while at the same time, like Zohara was saying, the acceptance, the embracing of what is, is very helpful as a beginning, but then this deeper integration and healing is a big task ahead. That's clearly your purpose. Yeah, thank you. So, some examples. <clears throat> when I do the workshops, webinars, whatever, people come up with, I ask them, would you come up with a project that is for you? So I want to tell you about the scope of the projects. And then I want to talk about specifically here on Prince Edward Island, because this is a, a, a very specific laboratory. Um, so let's start with a real simple one. A woman in Hawaii who grows microgreens, Susan Olima Fryer. Little green plants, takes 10 days, she teaches you how to grow them, then you grind them all up and drink them and they're healthy. Well, what can I do? I, you know, I just teach about green, uh, microgreens. <clears throat> so we came up with this idea, she did, of her definition of heaven on earth, which is essentially that we return to the Garden of Eden. She has now embedded into the end of each one of her emails, a simple act. I'm gonna go with simple now. A simple act for her, that goes out every time. We sent that around the world in a webinar and a woman in Chile said, Whew, what if we add the second heaven on earth question? Imagine you have a magic wand and with it you can have heaven on earth, what's heaven on earth? So she has now embedded that as the first part of the close of her email. And then she says, and for me, what heaven on earth is, is this. Simple, easy. We then go to uh, a police officer in Lubbock, Texas, who's created a 16 page manual called Heaven on Earth for Law Enforcement. Simple for him. We go to uh, a group of women in uh, Lunenburg County, which is in Nova Scotia, the next province over. Violence Against Women. We're doing this webinar. She's on the phone with me. She says, I gotta tell you, violence against women in my county, it's terrible. I've been to the police, I've been to the government, nothing. I mean, really mad. What would you do? It's, well, I, I don't know. I don't know your financial situation, Sue. You could donate $5,000. You could donate a penny. Well, what difference would a penny make? One of the other women on the phone call said, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
What if everybody in your county gave a penny a day, simple, to help end violence against women? She went, oh my God. They created a little jar, imagine this is an empty jar, a mason jar, with a picture of a woman, half her face beaten up, bruised, half her face bright alive with the light shining out. And the program was called, wait for it, Making Change. She asked people to donate a penny a day into this jar, take it home or your office. They raised $2,500. They took that to the government of Canada, which has a group called Status of Women, who gave them $100,000 for each of the subsequent three years. She now says, anywhere I go in the, in the county, people's first question is, what can I do? A penny a day, what difference can that make? Well, obviously nothing, no. Real estate agent, we're having coffee. And I said, is there a suffering in the world that bothers you? Yes, homelessness. And she went white, almost like I'd punched her in the stomach. She was so affected by this. And so I said, all right, so what's heaven on earth for, for, real, for homelessness rather? And she said, well, obviously a home for everyone. But Martin, that's impossible. I'm in a relationship. I, I'm a real estate agent. I work 87 hours a day. You don't understand. Blah, blah, blah. Stop, stop, stop. What are you going to do? She went, oh, goes back to her real estate office. 10 people, sits them down and says, we're going to create a home for everyone. Here's how. When you sell a home or a business, I'm asking you to, uh, to agree to have $100 taken off your commission check. All you have to do is say yes once. We'll look after everything else. They all said yes. They started a program called A Home for Everyone. They've raised over $200,000. They're, I think, six years old. And they give it every year to people, individuals, or organizations that come to them looking for money to create a home for everyone. Why? Simple. Then we go up to one of the women I'm most delighted by, Elizabeth in Austria. We're on a webinar and we're talking about what's a project and she says in halting English, oh, Martin, I know, Austria is a heaven on earth nation. I said, what? Yeah, Austria is a heaven on earth nation. I said, why do you say that? She said, because it's simple. And that blew the door open for me because I discovered that I don't know what simple is for you question that came out of all of that is, what's your simple? Because when you discover what your simple is, you'll do it. You will actually take action. So those are examples from, you know, putting it, embedding it in my email all the way up to a nation. They're all simple. Now, let me talk about here in Prince Edward Island. Prince Edward Island is Canada's smallest province. It's the birthplace of Canada. And I was doing a workshop here, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. And this thought popped into my mind. Prince Edward Island, PEI. PEI is Canada's first heaven on earth province. And I went, what? And I dismissed it. And again, popped into my head. PEI is Canada's first heaven on earth province. So I said it. <laughs> Just said it. Because it, you know, ultimately, what is it? It's declaration anyway, right? How do you create heaven on earth? By saying so. How do you create the new story? By saying this is the new story. So let me tell you what we've done. There's a tea merchant here, Lady Baker's Tea. Oops, can you see that? Lady Baker's Tea, and the tea is called Heaven on Earth. It's one. There's a cafe here called Kettle Black. You see the, the name? Oh, no, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, heaven on earth. Whoops, where am I here? Heaven on earth coffee. There's a jewelry store here. She has two, you see, actually, it's really, she has two stores. This is a card we made up with the three questions on the back. She's handed out over 5,000 of these cards in, each, in both stores collectively. Every purchase gets one of these cards. The Kiwanis Club. I don't know if you have, if you know what Kiwanis, Ruth, where are you in the US, Ruth? Yeah, all right. And so, uh, Zahara, do you have Kiwanis? It's a service club, like Lions, Rotary, yep. one of the, okay, it's a bit, men and women meet once a week and they're into how do we be of service. So, this is the Kiwanis Club of Charlottetown. And can you see they have something called the Heaven on Earth Leadership Award? 
which is open to any public or high school student in the province, what they have to do is come up with a Heaven on Earth project and they have to do it and they submit it for prize. Our first prize winner last year, the Swedish girl, uh, Abby Klo, she, she volunteered at an old folks home just up the street here. And Sunday night she noticed after dinner that all the elderly people would go back to the room down, depressed, really bugged her. She goes to school and she gets a bunch of her students, uh, colleagues, students together. And she goes and they do art every Sunday night. They have an art class. She wrote that up, presented it to the Kiwanis Club, and they said, hello. And they gave her the award. And she's won another award this year. She, the woman is amazing. There's a curio shop, a little shop down the road here. And they live in our little area here. She loves my book. She and her husband read a chapter at each separately, and then they come together and discuss it. And I, she, you know, she said, well, what can I do? I said, what do you do? She said, well, one thing, I make soap. So she made a, you see that? Heaven on Earth soap made in Prince Edward Island. And she made a little shell, which she just gave me last week. Look what's on the inside. You see that? Heaven on Earth. So, I've also interviewed three so far of the four political party leaders on the island, because we know them, asking them a fourth, the three questions that you were asked, plus a fourth question, here's a magic wand, what's Heaven on Earth for Prince Edward Island? And hopefully we'll get the fourth one and we'll put that video out. It'll be the first time, even if we don't get the fourth, three of the four party leaders in one province saying this is what heaven on earth is for our province wow so every year we do something to move it forward move it forward because we want this to be known as canada's first heaven on earth province which it is and then a couple of weeks ago i was speaking to this guy and now nova scotia which is one of the next ones over provinces is now the second heaven on earth province and so we've begun working there so the what I'm always looking for is examples, 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 and, and tying it into what turns you on, what's simple for you to do so that you can be part of, of co-creating heaven on earth. So that, now we jump to a higher level, what this is really all about is the new story. Let me talk a little bit about story. 10, 15, 20, 15 years ago at the moment, well, no more, like 10 years ago, we heard a lot of language called, the current story is not working, the old story is not working, we need a new story, we need a new story, we need a new story. But nobody named the new story. And so we stopped hearing that language. So my contribution is, we're gonna, we have named the new story, and it's called Project Heaven on Earth. That is the game, that's what we're up to here. So that what this is all about is, co-creating the new story of what it means to be a human and what it means to be humanity. Love you, Martin. <laughs> I love Thank you. you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the, 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 these stories are, yeah, I mean, the, the, this is the hope that you're, shining light on from so many different angles and because you're right it, it's a it's a latent potentiality yes <laughs> and everyone's got it everyone loves where they live to some degree and yeah i, I freaking love this i think it's amazing well uh, if you go and you go on the website under our store i go to project heaven on earth.com there are 63 examples mm -hmm. wow I, I, I'm sure that either I've mentioned this or somebody must, must have mentioned it to you to tell the story of Prince Edward Island from this lens. Have you, have you given thought about uh, partnering with a documentary filmmaker or anything to, to bring this alive so that we can? Oh, that's interesting. No, <laughs> you always are looking at the next level for me, always, Brandon. Always, 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 always. always. Um, <laughs> You, you know, I, so you're serving a very good purpose for me because I'm so in the bushes of it, right? 
I'm always scanning, 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 looking for, ah, okay, you can do this. There's a guy down the road who creates honey. And I said, what's the most expensive honey you got? And it's like uh, honey, which is in bee combs. So I began to toy with the idea with him of him calling it heaven on earth honey. That's heaven on earth, H-O-N-E, right? Honey. So uh, we haven't looked at that yet, but thank you. I love it. I love the idea. Yeah. Wow. I've got a question. Uh, maybe yes. I would like to challenge it a bit. I, I, was, I was wanted to ask you before, if it's not too personal, what is your uh, answer to if you had a magic wand? But then you started talking about uh, the thing that you want to, to see, and I, I just gathered that this is what is your, what you want, uh, if you had the magic wand, what would you, you want for it? But then you went, you went on and you spoke to Brandon, and there was a part of me that started feeling... What would be the best word to describe? I mean, hearing the name, heaven on earth, heaven on earth, okay, it all of a sudden became a bit empty for me. And I'm, I'm really happy to look what's in me that actually puts in the side. I think like with everything that I saw in life, when words became uh, the goal for something, and I know this is not your goal, but I'm saying what, what can happen, too many words happening everywhere, they become empty. And my question to you is how you, when you go and spread it, how you see it keeping, you know, the container full and then only calling it heaven and earth. Because you were mentioning asking firms and people to put the, the heaven and earth on the products and so on. How it keeps alive for me and present and not words is when people answer the three questions and they get turned on by a project that for them is heaven on earth. And I see that over and over in such creative, like a soap. I mean, I could never imagine a soap, a tea, a coffee, a policeman. It, it's so exciting for me. It's like heaven on earth is, is a, is a, metaphorical piece of software that says, okay, you can now have heaven on earth, but I need your content. So the excitement for me, the non-words, the uh, seeing people lit up and going for it. And being occupying with creating it day by day, living it. Very Not clearly. It. Okay. Very clearly, Zahara. Yeah. Very, yeah. Thank okay. Yes. Thank you. Ask my wife. <laughs> my wife always says, I'm so bored with this. And I see that you're not. I feel like a kid in, in, a, in a candy store every day, you know, when I, when I do this. Yeah. Martin, one of the things I'm seeing is like what may be a future expression of my heaven on earth is at the, it's at the end of my work with my clients, I have them do a purpose project. And it's, it's a process that leads through it, but I don't think I do a great job of connecting it to their, their understanding of heaven on earth. And I can almost see renaming this project, the heaven on earth project and, and, and have, because it, it like once somebody moves to these questions and they, and they get how simple it is and they, and they, and they get that it's always been there. I, I can see that being an enormous kind of um, a th through line, this thing that pulls them in from one heaven on earth project to the next. Like, okay, yeah. so my first one's going to be this. I'm going to learn about how my purpose, how my how my contribution affects my vision in this way, and then I'm going to do the next one, and the next one, and the next one. And I think I think that combined with some kind of network. I, to be determined network of people who are like all cheerleading for each other and supporting each other, I think would be like the, the structure that would have this, this kind of mimetic gold mine start to generate in massive, uh, you know, to, to increase the, the frequency of the contribution. I think it'd be really powerful. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you. Yeah. Ruth. Do you want to say anything? No? Okay. Uh, 
I think and, that's yeah, my are, time. We are over time, yes. And um, so, Martin, just to close, what is the best way for our community to engage with you, to engage with this heaven on earth within them? Um, like, if you could make one request of the 180 so global purpose leaders, what, what would that be? We too. Uh, one would be buy the book and, and work the book. Work the book with, uh, you know, with a group. It, it's interesting. It'd be lovely to have like uh, your purpose leaders paired off or no, tripled off, not paired, tripled off. Uh, and then sign up for the free course um, at projectheavenonearth.com. What will happen is you'll get a free seven-day course and then you'll get a weekly blog. What the blog does is normalize, 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 normalize this conversation. Well, Martin, thank you so much for sharing thank your your gospel, even though you're not a <laughs> proselytizer. You kind of are, which is great. <laughs> um, this, this is this has been beautiful because so many of these 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 calls kind of get into the specifics of soul and peeling away the stuff that gets in the in the way, and, and this is really about like the realm of possibility and dreams and our deepest aspirations and it 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 adds a, a, a very enlivening context to who we are so thank you martin thank you brandon thank you for for you know just your leadership in in this work i mean you really really are a leader yeah. thank, you. thank you and zahara you in in uh, australia Shanatova and ruth thank you for your work and healing all right thank so, you martin but, thank but, you why don't we sign thank off you. i'm gonna I'm going to stop recording and I just want to say thank you and see you all soon. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Martin. Thank you, Brendan. Nice meeting you, Ruth. Nice meeting you. Sir.